So last time we had you on the show, you spoke about the uh, BBC protest that you were conducting. So, and now your team is uh, organizing this new protest. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Sure. I mean, uh, you know, the background to this is 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 quite vast. So you'll have to give me some time on this one. I mean, uh, if I if I was to talk about the background as to why we're doing this, it's predominantly because. 2611 is India's 911 moment. Um, you know, we've had terror incidents before that and after that, but the, but the scope of the 2611 attacks, the way it was carried out, it was just not an attack on Bombay. Uh, from my prism of things, it was an attack. You know, our collective conscience. When I say collective conscience, as in the whole of India. And to to understand this, one would really have to delve into the background. Uh, of why this has happened. And for me, it's essentially Islamic terrorism, which has been responsible for this kind of reprehensible and absolutely ghastly attacks. I mean, the world has seen this for about the last 20 odd years, but India has been pleading the world to take cognizance of this and you know our plight for a very, very long time. Um, when we look at India uh, and its sort of... Uh, you know, its connections to terrorism and its exposure to terrorism. Um, the problem I have is that we've collectively, we've got a memory of that of a goldfish. And whatever happens to us uh, collectively, we, we tend to forget, uh, you know, after a couple of couple of years, we mourn about it, we talk about it, and then, you know, we, we easily cover our wounds up. Um, you know, it's, things have Things have been happening since 1947, if I was to look at it, right from the inception of Pakistan, uh, you know, back in uh, 1947, uh, 22nd of October 1947, it was the the Pakistani deep terror state, which essentially sent uh, Afghans and Pashtun tribal men dressed as, uh, you know, Kabailis to come and attack Kashmir. And this was a pl ploy which was essentially designed by the Pakistani government and the intelligence agencies way back on the 20th of uh, 20th of August. So that was literally five days after independence. So it's you, you, we can see that the foundation of in India and its exposure to terrorism has been with its foundation uh, of Pakistan, and how it essentially pans out is. It was the Pakistani army which designed this nefarious plan called Operation Gul Gulmak, where they would essentially use irregulars of the Pakistani army uh, to go into Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, they looted, they plundered, they pillaged, they raped uh, women and uh, you know uh, little girls, um, and they killed the men. And it was absolutely horrendous. So that sort of arm twisted. The, the Maharaja then, Maharaja Hari Singh, to sign the instrument of accession. And then, you know, India gets involved, airlifts uh, its men and sends them into Kashmir to fight the, the tribal, the so-called tribal, but actually the irregulars of the Pakistani army. And ultimately, Pakistan army comes into the foray, not, not, not very late, but in 1948. Uh, the plan was essentially hatched by a Pakistani colonel called uh, Colonel Sher Khan. And these are documented part of our history it's nothing that can can be refuted. So the reason why it's imperative to, for us to remember this war is simply because it's a lesson learned of defeat of of, of deceit and defeat both. Uh, I say defeat because uh, a part of Kashmir was essentially lost, part of Jammu and Kashmir, I beg your pardon, was lost, and that is today uh, what is known as Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, where the people of Jammu and Kashmir occupied by Pakistan are still crying for help. They're still crying for humanitarian aid. And all of that is not being covered by the Western media. Now, let's go into where things essentially become a bit interesting. 1971, the Bangladeshi Liberation War happens. It's a humiliating defeat for the Pakistanis, too much to bear. And they conduct an introspective session where it was essentially agreed that in a conventional war, it's nearly impossible to beat India. You, you cannot defeat them because it's too powerful an army. So they came up with a, with a plan called Operation Topak, spelled as T-U-P-A-K. Um, 
it was essentially driven again by the Pakistani intelligence, the ISI. And while they were supplying arms to the Northeast India uh, right from the 1950s, the real issue really begins now after the 71 war, where, where it was strategically clear that they wanted to bleed India with a thousand cuts. So how would they bleed India with a thousand, thousand cuts? They create problems in Jammu and Kashmir. They create problems in, in Punjab, which they call, essentially, they call this a K2 plan. Um, K2 as in Kashmir and, and, and Khalistan. And they would essentially uh, create unrest within India, which will, which will uh, trigger some sort of a balkanization and India will self-implode into, into various states. Uh, they exploited the porous borders on both sides, which is uh, Pakistan and Nepal and Myanmar, and they started training, uh, you know, people and creating uh, sleeper cells of of Indian milit militants. And this was the strategy that that sort of helped them create in insurgencies in Jammu and Kashmir. Um, the the rest the rest is history thereafter. I mean. Uh, the sleeper cells have caused us so much of pain, so much of grief. Uh, 93 bombings, 257 odd people were killed. 03 bombings, 93 killed. Akshardham, 80 people were killed. Some Jota Express in 2007, about 70, 70 odd people killed. Amarnath, about 110 people killed. So you see where I'm coming from. It's it's essentially a string of terrorist attacks which we've we've had to endure. Uh, but we forget and forgive too easily without demanding much accountability. And these are some, some of the attacks that I've read out only so that we can estimate what the over, overwhelming number of innocents that have lost lives uh, due to Pakistan-sponsored terrorism is. And like I said, 2611 is essentially our 9-11 moment. And Bombay was, was essentially a, a, a sort of an attack right on our, on our on our conscience and you know this is something which we should never forget and never forgive because this needs to become uh, a lesson learned for us and the question is have we learned a lesson probably not which is why we're doing this protest we know for a fact the protest is not going to do it's not going to change much from a Pakistani side of things. It's it's not going to suddenly change their hearts and suddenly say that you you know what we're going to give up our non-state actors. All of these Lashkar-e Jangwi and Lashkar-e Taiba, we're just going to dismantle them. It's not going to happen. But it's to raise awareness not only back home in India but also in Britain, which has suffered seven seven bombings, for instance. All seven seven bombers were all all of them were Pakistani origin. So that's that's what what what, what we want to ensure that we never forget and most importantly we never forgive uh, Pakistan for sponsoring uh, terrorism. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.